know your know your client be like we have various topics organized by this group of chartered accountants today is a special subject which is commonly applicable to most of the chartered accountants in practice this topic will be handled by an other than a very dynamic young chartered accountant having 26 years of practice as a chartered accountant at chennai we have with us ca immanuel clement who is a chemistry graduate from PhD Arts and Science College, Coimbatore, and he did his articleship with Vairavanadan and Company Chartered Accountants, Tirumal Valley. After completing his articleship, he joined with the uh, Fraser and Ross Chartered Accountants, Chennai. for a short period and then he joined vengat group of companies as and he got the position as a general manager within a short span of time he is also a post graduate uh, he he did the post graduate diploma in business administration equivalent to master of business administration from laola institute of administration he started his pra his practice and he completed the chartered accountancy practice for 5 years and become a fellow member of the institute in the year 1995 i am very happy to inform you that he is a partner of our respected member ca kanagaraj and the kanagaraj and associates he is a very senior partner and this firm has got more than 30 employees consists of chartered accountants cost accountants company secretaries retired bank employees retired officials from income tax department today our topic is a very interesting topic that's what i said earlier it is know your client you have to see whether your client is dissatisfied or whether your client is satisfied or whether your client is delighted therefore today is a very challenging situation with regard to the chartered accountants in practice we have two opinion one is we should not depend on the statutory attestation function we have to give value added services to the client and we have to develop our practice and give service the other area is as chartered accountants the chartered means this is a recognition given by the statute for as a chartered accountant chartering and uh, attestation function if you are not giving the service as attestation function what is your relevance anybody can do tax practice gst practice can do lawyers tax practitioners income tax practice can do other than chartered accountant need not be a chartered accountant similarly the areas where the attestation function is not required anybody can do services then what is the relevance of this chartered or a recognized a uh, function by a statute called the institute of chartered account the chartered accountants act 
if there is no statutory requirement of a chartered accountant what is the relevance of this this attestation function and the chartered accountant's relevance that is another thought in between that we have to find out the solution uh, how to become excellent in this profession and we have with us uh, ca emmanuel to enlighten us on these uh, the area of attestation function as well as value added services with this few words let us enjoy the presentation by ca emmanuel and over to you ca emmanuel best wishes thank you thank you sir thank you for the lovely words i really enjoyed hearing you <laughs> and the introduction it was very very pleasant to me and uh, uh, i think in today's well today's uh, scenario as uh, our uh, brother ca johnny has put in so the topic is of more relevance so i will gather my thoughts and i will gather my i will give my experiences also in this regard i think it will be of immense help to our professional fraternity so it is a great pleasure to present something before our friends and uh, i would like to have a presentation on kyc d know your clients and they are delayed so basically i am a chartered accountant with more thoughts on the managerial aspects as i have done some course equivalent to mba in liba which was a famous institution by then so i would like to give something more add something more which will be of helpful to the participants now let me share my screen sir whether this is visible sir yes visible yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yes. yes we can see i would like to talk about kyc d in uh, today's scenario <clears throat> i see lot of chartered accountants they have certain app apprehensions so now our certification of gst returns have been taken away and this year onwards we won't be certifying uh, 9c and uh, to that extent our uh, attest function is being restricted and regarding bank audits i recently hear a lot that uh, so many branches will be merged together say for example canara bank is there syndicate bank is situated next to that both the banks have already merged so no point in having too many branches and with uh, online um, transactions coming up and people may not have to visit the branches so frequently as we used to do earlier therefore these banks will be merged together so there will be to that extent reduction of bank audits also regarding companies audit there is always a talk that the small companies audit may go out of our hands and our president has already uh, said it is not true but uh, looking at singapore in singapore a small company means a company with a asset base of 50 crore rupees or turnover of 50 crore rupees or which employs up to 50 employees in singapore they have done away with statutory audit for small companies and we by definition capital of 2 crore rupees vis a vis turnover of 20 crore rupees is a small company so that apprehension is there in our minds and regarding income tax audit you know the limit was once 40 lakh rupees it is now going up so when the threshold limit goes up lot of uh, organizations which were coming under tax audit 
they may not come under section 44 ab to that extent our address function is reduced so under such circumstances i would like to say that there are more and more opportunities for chartered accountants to express to expose their knowledge and their wisdom which will bring them more opportunities and the industry require our knowledge our wisdom our guidance so instead of doing only statutorily obligated audits we can expose ourselves or we can equip ourselves more into other fields where i could see lot of chartered accountants their charges are high they are having a wealthy life also and in these statutory audits in every audit there is a equal and amount of risk also say for income tax audit you have got 271g and in certification of gst and companies audit you have penalty classes and when you ex, ex, ex when you showcase your knowledge these kind of risks are very very minimal that's what i would like to tell our professional colleagues so as christian cs i would like to quote few words from the bible see bible says and whatever you do work heartily as for the lord and not for men when we do something to please men we may land up into problem and we'll see we will work towards the lord and if anyone forces you to go one mile go with him too here the god talks about exceeding the expectation of the client and going uh, giving him a service twice as of what he expects and another verse says that if you do your business diligently you will stand or report to kings and not to mean men so that way we have to satisfy our client and we have to delight our client so there are three stages we we'll have to check whether our client is dissatisfied dissatisfied because of indifference rather than our professional reasons second thing we we'll have to check whether our client is satisfied third thing is whether our client is really delighted so we have been in a traditional area where accounting auditing taxation appeals survey search direct taxes indirect taxes secretarial compliance costings then fundraising sir compliance under various statutes so all these areas we have been practicing our skills or that we possess business acumen we have the numerical ability we have the communication skills we represent our client before various bureaucrats authorities and we are able to get convey the client's position to them we have the objectivity we have independence of thought chartered accountants are known for their integrity and their ability to work day and night and they are ability to work hard they are able to meet the pressures of deadline and so many of our skills it is endless and everyone every ca possesses more skills so i need not narrate them. but we like to concentrate on one thing most of us what we do is simply adequate we do certain services which adequately meets the requirement of the customer or the client so we take some certain um, data from him process them put his uh, uh, profitability statements statements of affairs then provide them 
to the income tax department or mca and does all kinds of work and we adequately work for him and uh, people talk about customer delight so we as a personal experience for an university we were called in to serve them during ugc inspection so our job our job actually what is the assignment given was to look into the financial papers accounts and give the data required by the ugc in the record format so we i went with the team we sat there during the course of ugc audits what were the papers they needed in which are format we prepared <clears throat> and we we were uh, we were prepared for the meeting so we provided everything educated their financial officer and it was okay but the thing we had to stay one more day because the ugc inspectors took some time to call up the financial papers so meanwhile instead of wasting time over there we analyzed all their uh okay uh, surplus statements and we found that they had about 20 institutions few of the institutions were not making any surplus and few of the institutions were making surplus and they were used only to fill the pit created by the institutions which are not performing well so then we further went to into it and we analyzed what kind of revenue these institutions are making what kind of expenditures they are making what is the staff expenditure hr expenditure so so many other areas we went into it and we suggested that few institutions may not be running profitably in the future based on our uh, conversation with the academicians and we prepared a report and after this ugc inspection was successfully completed we forwarded the report by a way of mail to their board people and soon after they called us and they wanted to hear from us it was a day long session to them and the chancellor himself came and sat participated in the meeting and we could see that our extra efforts quote delayed them in a way that our people sit there in their office even today and they take into they take us into confidence in all their financial accounting or ugc act matters so if we go beyond the expectations of our customer the customer gets delighted people talk about bad services so as a chartered accountant we do, don't do a bad service to a client then when this bad service comes see how we expect a certain things from the customer also if the customer is not a person who is capable of paying our fees or some other differences comes between then he feels that our services are bad so if you feel that this customer is not in your uh, frame then kindly get rid of the customer don't think the customer should not be sent out of our fold at all supposing you are doing a monthly service say filing of gst return and if the customer is not able to pay for two consecutive months and if your policy permits you to get rid of them please do it because continues to have him in your fold and he will be talking stories bad stories about you and that will spoil our reputation and people don't talk about adequate service so people talk only about bad service and when the service exceeds their expectations so when our client is satisfied is a question actually for which we must know his expectation and we must know how to meet his expectations 
and when we really meet them the customer is satisfied so for satisfying the customer we must know the client and we must know whether we will be able to meet his expectation so we must have a thorough knowledge and understanding about our client so when we sign a financial statements or prepare a financial statements do we check whether the financial statements meet the requirements of the customer in terms of income tax whether the figures there meets his requirement to the bank say the customer might have borrowed from the bank and the bank working capital liability may be there under secured or unsecured loans and he may have to have a drawing power against his limits so it is a quick calculation of how much is his stock and how much is his paid stock and how much is his receivables and what is the margin that the bank he has given them he given him in the sanction letter so just give a calculation do a calculation and see whether his balance sheet meets the requirement of the bank or some other conditions also i am just telling you about the drawing power and you can also have a check whether his insurance coverage is adequate or his stock or his insured asset crosses the coverage limit or in gst we can just put the total of from uh, his sales purchases as declared in the gst returns for a year and whether it matches exactly higher also is bad lower is also bad and we will have to check whether these expenses which are covered under tds whether they need to be you know, whether there is any gap in the tax deduction or tcs is there so some quick calculations we, we whether we are doing it i hope all of you are doing it and now i feel that tds delayed payment beyond 60 days or tds accumulation beyond 25 lakh rupees is a very serious offense and uh, the government is looking to prosecute those people getting them out of the prosecution is going to be a very difficult task hereafter so when i met a commissioner few days back she told me that even if there is an error in tds it must be in favor of revenue and if you have a problem whether to pay whether this is covered under tds or not you pay tds that's what is the opinion of the government today so next when you compare calculate the ratios and compare the ratios of the previous year if he has got a product mix or many products you can compare the ratios of individual product spend some more time and then give him a feedback as to which are the products which are going better which are the products which are the going um, i mean uh, the margins are uh, decreasing so such, such kind of uh, inputs we can always give to our customer at least we must know and we must know the business of the client for which i don't estimate i mean expect a chartered accountant to go and sit is in office or factories or okay because we have got to represent him before authorities and bankers so we will not be able to go and sit him but the knowledge about the business of the client will always make our decisions and the directing in a better way and we, when a customer enter into a contract and it is always better we get those documents go through it once because you no know, i see recently one businessman came he has lost about 40 50 crore rupees in an international contract and when i asked he said he has never consulted his chartered accountant or he has never taken an opinion about the contract to a law firm and he has just entered into the contract and even the payment terms there is very vague it is said 
that the contractor will be eligible to receive his payments on such and such a condition. It never said we will pay the contractor. So such kind of uh, contracts or even small, small contracts, you know, any contract we can um, call for it and with our uh, expertise in our office or with our own words, uh, main time we can spend and we can know the customer, what kind of contract they are entering into it. And if with our business knowledge, business expertise, we feel that the contracts are not proper, we can advise you. And we'll have to know that the, uh, we, we have to know the products dealt by him, the raw material and their sources. And we'll have to discuss the impact of Corona. This is a thing. So when I went, I could see in certain industries, there is 40% gap, 40% reduction in their top line. And their bottom line, of course, is much more depending upon the expenditures that they incurred during the lockdown period. And when I went and met the management of a company after this lockdown, I said for 2021, their turnover is less by 40%. When the MD asked, in their jewelry unit, is, uh, the, uh, the reduction is only 20%. Then I told him that even in jewelry unit, in real rupee terms, it is 20% lesser. But quantity wise, again, it is 40% down. So we'll have to compare their quantity, their rates, and their turnover. And what is the impact that is created in their bottom line? So we must know, ascertain ourselves, and we may have to, because we are going and advising a person who is there in the trade for 30 years, 40 years, or two, three generations. And when we go, we will have to have the facts, data, figures, and the information must be accurate. And during this corona period initially, when the first lockdown started, and we took a list of people who are who have borrowed from the bank, we wrote to the bank, we studied whatever the RBI has to say, and we advised them accordingly, sitting in home. And we also took a lot of uh, classes or uh, Zoom meetings to clients in various fields. Of course, medical health, they were good. And all other, especially education institutions, we could tell them how they can reduce on their cost or even postponement of cost. We know what is that they have got on hand and what is their uh, monthly commitments. In education institution, 85 to 90 percent are the cost of fixed. Their salaries, their maintenance, their security, and their working capital or, or, or I mean, variable cost is very, very tiny. So we could tell them that this is what they need to do. This is how they have to save their cash outflow, which has a very good impact on their institutions. So knowing their business will be better. So you know their processes, know their suppliers, customers, and terms of payments and receipts. You must know the factors determining their cost and profit. If they have a budget, ask for it. What is the cost control, cost reduction measures they take? That also you have a knowledge about it. You analyze or alternate processes. If any of your other client does, of course, we cannot share their secrets, but still we can guide these people. And certain industries, they have fixed uh, life and uh, future of certain businesses may not be there. So you must have an analysis of all those things and advising the customer on all these aspects or processing a knowledge on all these aspects will be useful as a charter accountant. So coming to banking uh, solutions, people tend to take short-term loans and use it for uh, long-term uses and they are into problem. So such kind of things you can always advise them because as a chartered accountant, we see hundreds of clients, hundreds of balance sheets. We possess fairly a good knowledge. We can always share our wisdom 
and share our thoughts, which will be of much use to our clients. So when our client is delighted, when we go beyond his expectations, he is really, really delighted. When our performances surpasses his expectations, he is delighted. When his confidence level on us is high, when our professional contacts and expertise help him to improve his prospects, then the customer is delighted. This is only a illustrative things. You must you know when your customer is delighted, and it depends upon the customer. Actually, the customer's expectations are not very high, and your job is to surprise them. A customer's delight is doing what they haven't even imagined. He will say, oh, wow, you know what you can do and what they can't do. And you showcase all your talents, wisdom, and your power, which will actually make them say, wow. So there are a lot of new areas besides the attest function. We have a lot of new areas where we can concentrate and in business advisory, transaction structuring and all. I nowadays see a lot of chartered accountants engaged in transaction structuring, merger, demerger, and they are into due diligence, valuation, so many other areas. And if we are not able to have an expertise in this field, don't worry, you can always hire them. And whenever I go to a client, I make it a point to take the experts in the particular subject also. If they are talking about a trust, I take a chartered accountant who is expert in uh, NGOs and trust. And if they talk about some foreign regulation, FDA investments, uh, banking, and uh, then we take the expert there. If they talk about regulatory or labor, take an expert there. So slowly we'll also acquire knowledge and they can be in your fold. When King Saul, when he saw a person of valor, he used to take them into his army. So when you take, see a person with knowledge, either you put him as your employee or you join him networking. So in financial and regulatory advisory, there are a lot of uh, things. Arbitration, FAMA, RARA, payroll, okay, all these things, chartered accountants can be of much use. But in these areas, I would take a management advisory and I would like to spend some more time talking about management advisory. Okay, so management advisory, I mean, a lot of things we can do to support the management to take wise decisions. Say we have to provide information to the management for making managerial decisions. Okay, recently, a few days back, an MD asked whether he can go for an investment of a property, which is there on the abutting the main road. And it is a huge warehouse. It is coming to him for a song because the previous owner is having some issues. And he wanted to know whether he can just invest that money, which will start giving him fee. I think now in Chennai, it is around 20 or 25 rupees per square feet for the warehouse. So he thought he can make a good investment, good money. So we went, got into the projects which he has got on hand. What is the investment that may be required? What is the fixed FD we have? What is the bank uh, facilities which have already been used? So what will be his future cash flow? So that when we worked out, we found that he will be just requiring all his sources to complete the projects on hand. And his cash flow inflows, if it, they delay by a month or two, then he will be 
facing some financial crunch if he takes this money out of his system and uh, invest in the warehouse so we discussed we gave a table of uh, things and then ma the management could wisely decide not to go for it and we also gave him an option that if at all he wants to go he can do it after 6 months and not at this juncture so we will be able to provide the information to the management the required data information the analytical statements which will satisfy the management and taking a wise decision secondly a more important topic is that we have to give a compliance report to the management say gst there are lot of deadlines monthly weekly annually quarterly so if these deadlines are not met then there is interest there is late payment charges that is late filing fee so many penalties the management has to incur and uh, the same with tds and tcs and in respect of tds we have to say that it changes every day and the difference between certain sections and all we must have a pakka knowledge and we will have to tell the management that for non compliance of filing the return or paying the uh, this thing uh, paying the record uh, amount to the government the interest penalty damages late filing charges late filing fees late payment fees in so many words the government collects a huge sum if only you could give a report to the management that because of the delay on various aspects the interest and other losses to the management is so much they will be able to take it up and they will concentrate on paying them on time so also pf and esa if it is not paid on time besides the damages paid in the respective acts you also cannot claim the employees contribution as your expenditure even if you end up paying it few days later we cannot avoid paying it but he has to pay a lot of penalty out of it so also professional taxes property taxes water and drainage taxes and the funds are available to them at 8 7 and of 6% of interest these people are charging 15 18 and 30 also proposing an electricity bill of 500 rupees is not paid today on the due date then they are charging a 50 rupees or 100 rupees whatever may be depending upon the state then a reconnection charges of few hundred rupees you cannot work out any interest then the mental agony so many other things comes and regarding the bank reports the stock statements and their qas qis ffr or cma data and whatever the provisional figures they give monthly sales figures and all if at all you are giving it on time the bank feels that you are cooperating with them the confidence level of the bank on the particular client is improving and the relationship with the bank is always good and if these are delayed then they feel that uh, the, their money is um, i mean uh, misappropriate so it is better we have a compliance report and report it to the management where all their systems are weak so also insurance and various annual maintenance contracts amcs this is only an illustrative list again then the next very important point is software support in many of the software uh, erps or whatever it is they don't employ a chartered accountant and they have never employed a very good uh, accountants knowledgeable person and because of there are there are certain bugs so as a chartered accountant we can sit go through their software go through the reports go through various uh, i mean uh, data that is being provided check whether it is correct recently we went 
we downloaded the software we saw the software we could see most of the item there is negative stock so when we asked how can there be a negative stock and we helped them in we are helping them we have put a chartered account in charge there to get the software because once the software is okay and it gives a proper report only then we can advise the management based on that if the turnover of the day which it gives is wrong then my projections are going to be wrong and we always have a retail in retail we used to have an analysis of sales during first week sales during friday evening saturday sunday and during weekdays during holidays so when we analyze all those things if the data provided to us is not proper or not reliable then always then then there is every possibility the, that we may mislead the management so if there is a software it is better we give proper support to the software person as well as the management so that the data given is reliable and moreover nowadays when there is a gst uh, survey or search or income tax survey or search they come sit together and if there is two different software what is for accounting and one is for other operations they to take data out of these softwares and compare it if there is a difference then they take it as it as your income or unaccounted income or unexplained income whatever it is so then you must have if the two uh, software are parallelly running we must be very vigilant and see that both the reports are identical not similar it is exactly matching then comes policy changes policy changes not only means the management policies when there is a government policy or when there is a, a notification by the government immediately we we are the first people to get in touch get the information lot of uh, whatsapp groups they give so much information to us you immediately analyze for which client this is useful immediately forward it to them have a discussion on them that will help the client and the uh, client also feels safe and he, he feels that the auditor or the chartered accountant is taking care of them and if the management is not able to prepare the budgets or the budgets prepared or giving a rosy or wrong picture sit together and prepare their budgets and if they have a legal or professional query we can also involve ourselves and taking up with uh, the professional uh, people and if it is an income tax query you can always have lot, a lot of uh, uh, chief commissioners or commissioners retired from the respective department and they will be willing to share their uh, opinion and the client will be more than willing to pay them so any legal or professional opinion that a management requires we will arrange it if we can give it is better and if we find more better experts then we will avail their services on behalf of a client and we will be able to advise them properly and we can prepare fund flow cash flow statements for the clients nothing wrong in it we will have to determine their long term and short term financial requirements so many other things are there i recently you know i went to uh, nbfc they have lot of branches in uh, the state or throughout the country and uh, i could see that uh, many of their branches are running in loss even though on book they feel they are making a profit because they have not apportioned the cost of capital to the individual branches so we guided them and we finally told them that instead of having so many branches they can close down many of the branches wherein they will be saving on the fixed cost and if a particular sum of uh, loan is not dispersed from a particular branch their operations will not be optimum and they have to close down such kind of branches even uh, banks are going to do those uh, exercises you can help them help even the banks 
so these are all some instances beyond that your personal experience with your clients you know better if you have your kvc intact you will be able to advise your client better in so many ways so i have got few instances of customers delay the customer normally is delayed not when your fees is reduced but his income is enhanced when your value added services increases his income definitely he is delighted and nowadays we are interested in cutting the interest cost of every client so we take a list of clients who borrow more than 10 crore rupees and we have been talking to their bankers and if the loans have been borrowed at 7 and 1/2 8 8 and 1/2 9 we would like to bring it to sub 7.5 and no when a customer was prepared to borrow for about 80 lakh rupees for his car loan then we uh, intervened and his cost was about 8.5 then we arranged from some other bank for 7.05% and we cut this uh, cost on the insurance also so this is not in our scheme of things but when you arrange a loan and you reduce his cost when you income is enhanced the customer is really delighted he won't mind paying his fees so for all these things we need to equip ourselves and very very importantly we have to keep ourselves updated every moment there are a lot of things that comes up that changes so we will have to keep our eyes open ears open and we will have to update our knowledge there are a lot of books that are coming in e books are there have a e book reader when you travel in your car if you have some free time go through these books you need not read it thoroughly but nevertheless we must know that there is some change and when it is recorded we must be able to recall our memories go into depth of it and we will be able to give a proper answer to our customers our knowledge is our knowledge is our power and even in department i could see that people who have the knowledge the information the wisdom they have a special command over others so in our profession also our knowledge that to updated knowledge is very very important if we don't have a proper knowledge we are not chartered accountants we are mere accountants and secondly we have to educate our employees constantly it is not that knowing debit and credit is enough to work and raise cfo they need to be educated in our office we have a practice of spending an hour every saturday one person will take a class to all others and now it is immaterial whether we must be in the same place we can be connected through zoom calls also so our staff who are working in our clients place also can join at the particular time they can also listen to the class so when we give the responsibility to our juniors they really do a wonderful job it is educating themselves taking class means acquiring more knowledge spending more time today our field is very volatile techno savvy employee labor oriented our mistakes are not uh, forgiven it is unbearable to our clients we meet various deadlines our office requires a lot of investment we require an air condition we require nice seats a system to work and a carpet under their feet so our investment is huge and that is also a part of our equipments this list goes on and as a fellow charter going you know better so you can equip yourself with whatever that is required to be alive in this profession you please check whether you are 
adequately remunerated for your hard work for your smart work for your dedication for the knowledge for the wisdom the for the expertise for our labor for the responsibility we take when we represent a client we feel it is our own company when we work for a client we feel it is our own we never feel that it is somebody else so for the responsibility and accountability which we take on our shoulders whether or we adequately remunerate for the strain we take to meet various deadlines whether the, whether the overtime whether the customer gives for our investment whether he gives return do we what is our aim in our profession being engaged all the time or to have a job satisfaction to earn the respect love and affection of the clients to retain a big customer base to have a growth to have adequate remuneration it can be a combination of all these things so it is better we classify our customers as to his paying habits as to his loyalty his growth potential and i could remember during 1993 a client customer came to me and said sir please watch out for my fires i will be a big man in the years to come so i loved it yes he is a return immediately the turnover was 3 lakh rupees the profit was 30000 rupees and he still he still confidently told me that to take care of his file because he would become a big big industries and it happened and even now he is our flagship company so it is better we have a classification of our clients we have an analysis on their traits so we have to compare with other professional bodies and other professions how the medical profession thrives how the engineering profession thrives how the software professionals they thrive and we will have to have a comparison of other professions with ourselves so it will be always useful to us and we will have to check where are we say we will have to have a scale of 1 to 5 and there are about 15 points scale which i have prepared you can have few more or you may not have few here so whether your staff are fully empowered to delight customers so you have a survey put yourself a ranking between 1 to 5 5 is the top if you secure five no more improvement is needed whether we are constantly looking for better ways to delight our customers yes or no the scale will tell you whether we know our customers who are there for the what is their requirement what do they really want so all these points you can have a look at it and you let's check in a scale how it goes what is your present performance and it is better we train our staff also and besides our staff train our clients also when there was a lot of survey going on around here we called our people and we educated them what a client must do during the period of survey or search what he should do what he should not do do's and don'ts that was useful for most of our clients when they were really facing such kind of uh, situations they know what will happen so few truths about the customers it is 10 times more expensive to acquire a new customer than to keep the current customer we will have to open our eyes and open our ears what people say about us what our clients think about us do people tell positive stories about our organization 
and if it is no we will have to correct ourselves we will have to check what we should be doing because there are always changes and we will have to create a life changing experience and today i would like to leave you with a question whether whatever we do whether we do it with a sense of perfection so when for bank purpose or appeal purpose i am not here to find fault with the fellow chartered accountant but when we go through the papers even the balance sheet may not have been tallied so such kind of basic works or small small spelling mistakes elsewhere and it gives a bad impression and if the draft is not proper it leaves you with a very bad impression so please check or have a person to check whether whatever we do do we have perfection in the work so friends it has been a great experience to talk to you and i thank you for the opportunities given hope you have heard it and i would like to answer any questions or it is not a, a question and answer session maybe we can discuss certain points and so then thank you I, Mm. thank you ca immanuel the word uh, the name immanuel is very very important as far as this the friends who are attending this programs are concerned the meaning of immanuel be with god therefore i am borrowing your last item that do we have perfection in our work the same question which uh, we are all thinking whether do we have the perfection in the performance or presentation of ca immanuel i must say you have done your work perfectly by covering almost all the areas in a very excellent manner and you have covered a, a, a a very elaborate um, area by preparing a very beautiful powerpoint presentation covering the apprehension of the members today with regard to the abolition of compulsory audit under section 35 sub section 5 of the gst act and also the limit of tax audit enhanced from 5 crores to 10 crore rupees and the uh, the rumors which we are hearing with regard to the abolition of the compulsory audit under the companies act with regard to private limited companies and so many other areas where self compliance government is preferring with that uh, there is certain apprehensions and also you have covered the satisfaction and dissatisfaction and also the traditional areas what about our skills when our client is satisfied when our client is dissatisfied and you have already covered new areas new opportunities like a management advisory and for that we need to equip ourselves we need to provide adequate infrastructure technology etc and uh, whether we are properly remunerated or not that is also very important if you get, if you want to get a proper remuneration your client should also go, should get the adequate income so these are all very much important as far as satisfaction and dissatisfaction is concerned compare with other profession like uh, doctors engineers chartered accountants and cost accountants artists advocates then uh, other areas we have to compare 
and see whether our profession is very lucrative what are we where are we now we have to consider and what should we do that was our question and what is the solution that you have made it very clear that perfection and you have to give value added services uh, let us see what other members want to say about your uh, ideas and your opinion and over to our friends who are attending this program kindly uh, ask questions our friend the ca emmanuel is very happy to answer or you can also share your views hi this is maxwell yes sir uh, yeah thank you uh, ca uh, bujani and uh, thank you ca uh, when manuel uh, to start with I, i think i got your name a little bit wrong at the starting so please forgive me for the mistake but yeah i mean excellent presentation i think uh, uh, clearly an eye opening session uh, because yes i remember way back when um, i was in the field of practice as well um uh, some of these things that you mentioned was not the way of a life those days and i remember the thing was only we are out to make money you want to sign a document you want to certify something yeah please pay but people never went out of the way to you know uh, delight a customer and i think as business has gone forward i think yeah a lot of these things are changing and i think you brought you delivered the point um, you know uh, excellently well you really hit the nail on the head Uh, and i think yes uh, we all need to learn more and more and as we move forward to ensure that we keep delighting our customers one excellent point you mentioned as well in your presentation was the piece where you said while you do this a very simple ways to pretend the business is your own and what would you want to do and that's one key i think take away i feel from this uh, the session because i think that will uh, address uh, every other aspect of uh, how you want to uh, with, with delight your customer uh, i think that's um, the one piece that i just wanted to contribute and say and, and thank you so much yeah thank you sir yeah. thank you cm maxwell kanagaraj sir kindly share your views regarding the uh, you know abolition of statutory functions or sta attestation functions uh, withdrawn by the government i was keeping quiet for two reasons one uh, i know him for quite a long time and he is my partner if i want to talk high about him then i should not look bad in the eyes of others but one thing i can assure you whatever he talked to you it was he was practicing all these things because i know him from day one it is uh, from day one when he started his practice from that day i know him and he has been using all these principles in his practice so that is why he is flourishing so it is not a question of uh, preaching alone he is practicing it. that much i know about him second thing uh, i was keeping quiet why because i had gone away from this traditional practice long time back so i am uh, considering the consultancy and expert advice as my service and i don't entertain this uh, regular audits and uh, this tax audits uh, tax return filing and all that that uh, emmanuel knows well so there is another reason why i was keeping quiet because i am an odd man out so i am not <laughs> correct person to advise on that but from my experience i feel that fetches you more revenue than the regular practice so auditing is a thankless job that is what i i've been considering a long time right from uh, so to say 1992 i have started giving up uh, these uh, audits and all that so i am not the person to comment on all these things 
because everybody can have gold so whatever emmanuel said he has been practicing and he has been successful in that so that much assurance i can give you and second thing i want to give one advice that you have to use all sorts of softwares which are available first of all we have to modernize our office we have to use software fully so one or two people for example uh, mark disuza he has uh, uh, developed a software exclusively for his office uh, mark you can share your views on that so now institute has got such an uh, initiative you have seen that particular uh, uh, cmp there is a committee for members in practice they are giving lot of uh, software at a concessional rate you can use it for example there is a software called simplify practice which is uh, <clears throat> which is available at the rate of 12000 rupees per annum so that can be used by us for modernizing our office for complete all your uh, procedural matters can be looked after by that there is an initiative by the uh, institute so either if you can afford you can develop your own software like mark or or you can use these type of software so we have to modernize our office dependency on these individuals have to be reduced it should be used only for expert work or expert opinions so otherwise the procedure has to be documented and that should be full proof so we are not doing it we depend everything i been um, seeing people even if they if you are using a computer they you again use a calculator to recheck so that is happening in most of the office so we have to modernize and that will save lot of time and ultimately lot of money in the sense your time is saved and you can concentrate on the creamy layers so that is the problem so for example that 80 20 principle all of you must be aware what happens the people who are paying 20% of your fees out of your total income the client who are giving you 20% of revenue would be utilizing 80% of your time you analyze this principle based on the revenue you allot the timings to the client if that happens we will have a improvement uh, mark if it is okay for you you can share your experience on your erp yeah sure uh, mr kanagaraj uh, i compliment uh, mr emmanuel for his uh, presentation and nice to see mr johnny after a long time how are you johnny uh, doing good yeah. thank you i remember 20 20 30 years back i think we yes, were yes i come to the video mark uh, you are my, my very old friend video is, video. Video, is, video is not uh, you know switched on because of certain problems So, I think uh, you yeah. are talking about forty uh, years. I mean, thirty, uh, thirty-five years back. Thirty-five years back, correct. Ah, you know, yeah. it was we st- we all stayed in Loyola for. Yes, a, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Anyway, coming back to you know, Mr. Kankaraj touched a very uh, important uh, aspect of uh, how do we automate our process. Uh, I think one of the things what I learned. you know maybe mr kanagaraj also is following the same is that uh, we need to adopt you know to the present day uh, challenges what an auditor faces and no more ticking it is only clicking now that is what uh, you know people say but how do we click that is what is the question mark uh, i think from uh, mr ragu's time as president he was also asking there is no software available in the market where a small ca can use we have idea we have uh, you know maybe very advanced packages with uh, you know all the big four users but still you know we don't have any software for a, a company like us with the medium uh, you know practitioners so i started uh, you know this process 3 uh, 4 years back so we have almost uh, through but that is a specific uh, Uh, you know a user based uh, you know specific user software not a general software that is what you know we have developed but maybe you know that i may have to relook at it how exactly we can make make use of that maybe when opportunity comes i will uh, you know share that but uh, what i have seen is now you can make use of these uh, packages like uh, sharepoint 
Microsoft products, which we are using extensively. Entire our work papers are saved in SharePoint. In SharePoint itself, you know, we have done uh, basically for uh, clients. Uh, clients can share the documents. Plus, we have made checklist where you can, uh, you know, even the staff can replicate. We have even uh, done in SharePoint how exactly you can do the approval process. So this, these are some things which we achieved, which is available uh, for 125 rupees per month for a user, which you can directly get a SharePoint. But if you want uh, an advanced version with the you know, control of uh, data security and all that, maybe you have to spend uh, some 1,200, uh, 1,100 rupees per uh, user per month. So that is one. And we have also you know, gone into uh, uh, Azure, uh, that virtual desktop. Earlier it was called WVD, Windows Virtual Desktop, which has brought down our hardware cost like anything where we can you know, make use of these particular features, you know, what is available there, where now a tally is accessible you know, from anywhere by our you know, staff. We are not dependent on any uh, brick and mortar kind of office. We work from anywhere. We ask our clients to upload the documents virtually where we can verify. Those are the things which we have uh, you know, reduced uh, you know, our uh, uh, time involved. But of course, there is a cost a uh, chartered accountant told me, think uh, software package is another chartered accountant in your office. So you may have to pay him well because any software, I think you may have to spend, you know, at least 25 to 30,000 rupees minimum per a month, but are we prepared? But I think it is worth in the long run to invest that kind of money in our IT related uh, uh, infrastructure. So these are a few things which uh, you know we have implemented uh, you know in our office, and uh, it is benefiting a lot. Of course, uh, last time we heard uh, about uh, you know how exactly we brand, and those things I think I have learned a couple of things and which we have implemented already with the, you know the last session what uh, we heard about uh, brand building, about website, uh, about blogging. All those things I think will take uh, you know take us to reach and adopt to this particular situation what uh, Mr. Emmanuel has covered. And that is where we delight, or that is where we make an impact uh, you know, to our clients. And this traditional practice, if you start depending on the same audit, signing, hand over the statement, file the returns, and then go next year, I know that we will not be able to add value to our client. And uh, I think the sum and substance is add value to the client. If you don't add value to the client, the client will not remain with us. Whether there is a compulsory audit or whether it is a voluntary things, if we add value, a client will be for our for life. That is what is my experience. So don't worry about uh, you know, uh, changes in law, but continue to do a good service and see that the client is dependent on you. You are not dependent on the client. This is what is my experience. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, CMR. After a long time, I am hearing from you, uh, maybe 33 years back. Uh, I would like to ask one small question to our friend, CA Emmanuel uh, yes, Clements. That is, uh, our institute was founded by an act called the Chartered Accountants Act 1949 to regulate the profession of chartered accountants and to conduct the examination. Now, over these years, our members are recognized and as uh, chartered accountants as a prestigious profession, differing from others, we have the attestation function. Now, once this money making alone is not the objective of the profession, you can do business. You can do tax consultancy, you can do various other management consultancy, etc. And for that, this qualification is not compulsory. This qualification as a chartered, I repeat the word chartered, the chartered accountant qualification is not compulsory for making money or practice a flourishing practice. A lawyer or a tax practitioner can also achieve these goals. Now, by uh, you know, with I mean, with withdrawing this 
attestation function by the government through the statute whether it it will uh, uh, you know the reduce the importance of chartered accountants uh, what do you think sir uh, in my opinion and experience and this withdrawal of uh, certain statutorily given powers may not have may not have a impact on our uh, wisdom knowledge or usage for the value addition to the thing and our importance to be honest see i'll give you a small example today we think that this gst um, return need not be certified by a ca that we may consider as a negative or we may uh, feel that we have lost certain importance about our is or our attested attest function has been withdrawn but the thing is no one so a company called me and they wanted to verify their gst returns and it was a huge turnover company so we went there sat there and within uh, one day we found that uh, they have not been taking credit on import credits see igst during the import it is never shown in your 2a and it is not reflected in any of your uh, input uh, tax credits so you may have to separately take the input so the loss there was about 90 lakh rupees it was not a loss because we could go in time we could take it but it was uh, interest and other cost were lost so and we also told the management that they need to educate their staff members consisting of about 13 accountants and then we arranged a class with the help of a, a retired irs gst official so we expanded this thing and just uh, i am now it is a construction company sir and if a nail is bought our man checks whether it is there in their boq it is there in the revised boq rapid boq whether the intent uh, is there whether the purchase order is there quotations are there and whether the goods have come in whether the records of gr and all other things are there whether the nail is placed in the proper place and whether it is billed to the client and whether the client has collected the money so it is end to end verification of the from boq till the money is realized so this confidence or our scope was enhanced i don't think just because 9c need not be signed by a chartered accountant our scope or work as in any way reduced sir and uh, to be honest we have never uh, intervened in the statutory audit the company and whatever we do we send it to the statutory auditors and get their approval also we also keep them informed we arrange one quarterly meeting with the, the statutory auditors inform them so it is a pooling of knowledge and collection of wisdom for the clients and he is happy with this and he never uh, feels that uh, we are signed by a ca is making any difference even though he signs it is being audited checked verified and confirmed by two chartered accountants now one is an internal auditor that's me and a statutory auditor thank you yes. thank you uh, thank you ca manuel for share your valuable views but your views may not be the views of all others we know uh the importance of attestation function uh, we have to debate in future because the society is looking at you not as a tax consultant not as a uh, advisor you are looking at as a chartered accountant that is how the society is looking at you the that is what we have learned from the beginning when we started the chartered accountancy course we started with the word chartered so that chartered is very important uh, it, that is my view but uh, your view may be different anyway it was very interesting and very very useful section uh, thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and we have with us ca sabu john our to sabu john